A bulb is placed along the angular bisector of two plane mirrors, which are inclined at an angle of 60 degree with each other. The number of images formed is, so two plane mirrors inclined at 60 degree, an object is placed at the angular bisector, we need to figure out how many images are formed. So what is the key concept here? The image formed by one mirror acts as an object for subsequent reflections. So let's say this mirror is M1 and this mirror is M2. So the image formed by M1 of this object O is going to act as an object for M2 and M2 is going to form an image. Now the image formed by M2 is going to act as an object for M1 and M1 is going to form an image and this is going to continue. So all we need to do is do the reflections and count the number of images. Okay, so let's get started. So this is the object and I'm assuming that reflection is happening at M1 first. Okay, so this is the object then object distance is equal to image distance, okay? So this is the object distance, so this has to be equal image distance. So the image is going to be formed over here, okay? Now this is the image formed by M1, this is going to act as an object for M2, okay? M2, let's extend this a little bit. Now this becomes the object distance, so what will be the image distance? This, correct? So the image is going to be formed here. Now this image is formed by M2, this is going to act as an object for M1 again. All right, so this is M1 over here. So object distance is equal to image distance. So another image is formed over here. Again, this is going to act as an object for M2. So here is M2, where will the image be formed? Here, correct. Now we have reached this point. Now we also have to see that this object is going to be directly reflected by M2, okay? So if that direct reflection we take, the image is going to be formed over here, okay? So you can count the number of images formed. How many images are there? There are five images and that should be my answer, okay? Now there is another way to do it and that is if you can remember a simple formula. What is that? We need to calculate N which is 360 degree divided by theta. Theta is the angle between the mirrors. So this becomes 360 degree divided by 60 degree. So it is six. Now when n is even, the number of images formed is n minus one. So that is six minus one is equal to five. And that should be my answer. All right, let's have a look at the options. So option A is going to be the right option, but what should all you should also remember is the takeaway. And the takeaway is this entire set of formulae, okay? So what is the situation? If we calculate N and N comes out to be even, then the number of images formed is N minus one, irrespective whether the object is placed at the angular bisector or not. In case of even, it does not matter. Okay, when N is odd, Two situations will arise. One, when it is placed at the angular bisector. So in that case, the number of images formed would be n minus one, okay? Because two images would be overlapped on each other. When they are not placed on the angular bisector, then the number of images would simply be n, all right? And if n is not an integer, the number of images would be the greatest integer function of N, okay, so let's say n comes out to be 4.2, then our answer would be four. Okay, we should remember this as well. But the vis visualization technique, that is also something we should remember. All right, now let's move to the next question. A convex mirror is used to form an image of a real object. Then mark the wrong statement. What are the statements? The image will lie between the pole and the focus. The image will be diminished in size. The image will be erect the image may be real, all right? So we should remember the image tracing for a convex mirror, okay? So for a con convex mirror, what happens? So we take a ray of light, which is parallel to the principal axis, it gets reflected and it will appear that is, it is coming from focus, simple. Next is we take a ray of light, which is normally incident. How do I know it is normally incident? It is incident in the direction of the center of curvature. So it will be reflected in the same direction. Here is the point of intersection. So A prime B prime is going to be my image, okay? So what is the nature of the image? One, it is upright or erect. Two, it is virtual. And three, it is diminished, okay? So we have figured that out. But let's 
see why this happens. So the key concept here is that the convex mirror is a diverging mirror. Okay, so no matter where you choose the object. So I choose the object which is let's say slightly closer and this is F and this is C. So even if this is closer, this is going to be diverged. This light ray is going to be diverged. Hence it will appear that it is coming from focus. And the next light ray we choose, if we choose in the direction of C, then obviously we'll have to produce it back and the intersection is always going to happen here. So intersection is happening between a line which is going through F and between a line which is going through C. So no matter where your image is, your Im where your object is, your object is here or your object is here, your object is big, always the intersection is going to happen between this line and this line. So obviously where is the image going to be formed? The image is always going to be formed between the pole and focus. It will be upright and it will be diminished. So this is a result we can remember for com convex mirrors. Okay. So what will be the wrong statement here? The wrong statement will be the image may be real. Okay, because this is a diverging mirror, there is no way that the ray of light is going to cross to the other side and actually intersect. That just cannot happen. Okay, so what is the correct option? The correct option is going to be option D. And the important takeaway here is that for a real object, a convex mirror always, always makes an erect virtual and diminished image between the pole and focus. And this is something we should remember about convex mirrors. Okay, let's move to the next question. A convex mirror used for rear view on an automobile has a radius of curvature of 3 meter. If a bus is located at 5 meter from the mirror, find the position and nature of the image. Okay, so it's a convex mirror. And the general convention we take is that the reflecting side is towards the negative axis. Okay, so the truck would be somewhere over here. The focal length would be somewhere on the other side because it's a convex mirror. Okay, so we have to find out V. So obviously we'll use the mirror formula 1 by V plus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F. And let's make the substitution. So U is going to be negative, of course. So I'll have to substitute minus 5 is equal to 1 upon F is going to be positive because it is a convex mirror. So focal length is equal to radius of curvature by 2. So this becomes 3 upon 2 meter. So 1 upon 3 by 2 I'm substituting, so this becomes 2 upon 3. Okay, so 1 upon V is equal to 1 upon 5 plus 2 upon 3. 15 is the LCM, so this becomes 3. And then 5 into 2 becomes 10, so 13 upon 15. So V would be equal to 15 upon 13, and that would be somewhere around 1.1 or 1.2 meter. Okay, so V comes out to be positive. V comes out to be positive which means this is a virtual image. Absolutely. So my answer is going to be 1.15 meter virtual image. And let's have a look at the options. So option A is going to be the right option. Now there's a fun fact here. Why is this written in rear view mirrors that objects in the mirror are closer than they appear? It is always written in those mirrors. Okay. Any, any idea why that is written? Okay. So what we know is that a convex mirror for a real object makes an image which is diminished in nature. Okay. And that's what we want in a rear view mirror because we want our field of view to be large. We want to see more things that are behind us. So in that case, the convex mirror makes the images a little smaller so that we can have a larger field of view. Now, if we see something small, it appears to us that it is far, but actually it's not that far. Hence, because of the diminished size of the image, we feel that the objects are far, but that's not the case. Okay, so objects in the mirror are closer than they appear and we should take care of it. Okay, let's go to the next question. Our actual rays parallel to each other, but not parallel to the principal axis fall on a concave mirror as shown in the figure. Find the perpendicular distance of the image from the principal axis. Okay, so these rays are paraxial, which means they are very close to the principal axis, which means this angle is going to be very, very small. Now these paraxial rays are parallel to each other, but they are not parallel to the principal axis. So they are going to converge at a point and we have to find out that what is the distance of the image from the principal axis. Okay. Now if 
parallel rays of light which are parallel to the principal axis they hit the concave mirror then they are all converged at the focus okay but the situation here is different they are parallel to each other but they are not parallel to the principal axis so the key concept here is that paraxial rays parallel to each other converge on the focal plane okay if they are parallel to each other but they are not parallel to the principal axis they are not going to get converged on the focus but they are going to conver get converged on the focal plane so what is the focal plane it is a plane which is perpendicular to the principal axis and passing through the focus okay this is the focal plane so the image would be formed somewhere over here is that correct now what that tells me that this distance is going to be the focus okay so we need to figure out what is this distance h okay so let's look at this triangle over here so can we say that tan alpha is going to be h divided by f of course so h will be f tan alpha now if we look at the options we don't have this option anywhere okay we don't have this option anywhere so where are we going wrong we are not going wrong anywhere what we have to do is we have to take the assumption that alpha is very small when alpha is very small tan alpha will be nearly equal to alpha so this becomes h is equal to alpha f and that is going to be my answer now let's have a look at the options so option b is going to be the right option figure shows incident rays falling on a convex mirror the nature of the object and image respectively can be okay so object could be real or virtual and correspondingly image could be real or virtual we have to tell what is the right combination okay now one thing is very clear that the incident rays are converging okay the incident incident rays are converging so there is no way they can intersect in the real space so the object has to be virtual that is a given we cannot have a real object in this situation because the incident rays are not actually intersecting okay so object virtual object virtual object real is eliminated right here okay now we need to figure out between b and c what is going to happen okay and the key concept here is as simple as the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection okay so let's take this scenario first what is happening here the light rays are incident like this so the virtual object would be formed over here and what we see is that the virtual object is to the right of the center of curvature now what we are going to do is we are going to find the normal which is the line joining the center of curvature so this is going to be the angle of incidence so what is going to be angle of reflection this is going to be the angle of reflection and it will be on the opposite side of the normal okay similarly the case would be here so when we produce that back we say that the image is going to be formed over here is that correct so the image formed in this case is a virtual image okay because it does not actually intersect the reflected rays when produced backwards intersect perfect so yes virtual object but image was also virtual now let's have a look at this situation now here the object is certainly virtual what we see over here okay now this is the center of curvature now in this case the object is towards the left of the center of curvature so again this is going to be the normal now this is the incident light is that correct so this is the angle of incidence now the angle of reflection is going to be on this side okay so it is going to get reflected like this and when it gets reflected like this it is actually going to meet at a real point so this image form would be a real image okay so depending on whether object is to the right of the center of curvature or to the left of the center of curvature we would see that the image could be virtual as well as real okay so that is going to be my answer and let's have a look at the options so both options p and c are going to be the correct options